Tamara here. Today I want to talk you through a whole bunch of different rag quilting ideas. I have been making rag quilts for quite some time now. I am afraid to say some decades now and it is my favorite way to make a blanket. I enjoy it because it's really easy for beginner sewers as well as there are so many different ways that you can actually make a rag quilt which in the beginning I did not realize and I searched everywhere high and low to figure out different ways to make rag quilts and I have a long list for you. I am going to start with the simplest of rag quilts and then I'll move all the way into my favorites which of course are animal rag quilts. So I hope you'll stick around till the end so that you too will have a whole bunch of new rag quilting ideas. Let's get started. So of course rag quilts are simple, easy to make, and easy to put together. You just make a bunch of squares, throw them together in whatever patterns you want, and already by doing that you can create a whole bunch of different types of rag quilts. I have done rag quilts in checkered patterns. I have done them like this where you have the squares diagonal. I have done uh, stripes with those types of rag quilts. You don't even have, well you could, you could do all the same color in the squares, or you could literally cut out strips of your fabric and create a striped pattern rag quilt that way. If you're doing that and you add batting, just make sure to sew one center seam so that that batting is in there nice and tight and it's not going to move around on you. Another way to make a rag quilt where you're still using that block pattern would be to add scallops on the end. I do have a YouTube tutorial to teach you how to do that and within that YouTube tutorial it will have the free pattern downloads to make the scallops for your rag quilt. I'll show you here. These are the scalloped edges to the rag quilt and I think it adds a nice little detail to what otherwise would just be a simple normal rag quilt. Another way to make rag quilts would be to do the no cutting rag quilt method. I also have a tutorial on that one. With that rag quilt tutorial I walk you through how to make a no cutting rag quilt with or without batting. These two rag quilts here are the rag quilts that I made with that method. It's a simple method. Some people call it the one hour rag quilt and I love it. I love it especially if you're trying to make a rag quilt as a gift and you're running out of time. This is the perfect way to do that. I'm gonna slowly create a mess behind me as we go. <laughs> Another few ways to make rag quilts still using the square method would be if you cut out the squares and instead of placing them in rows you twist them so that they take on more of a diagonal shape and then you can lay them out like that and then just add triangle pieces to the outer edge to square out your rag quilt. That would make a beautiful rag quilt. I've also seen I have not done this version yet, I'm excited to try it, is the chevron pattern. So you will cut out rag quilt strips more in a rectangle shape and then you'll piece them together in a zigzag pattern and that will create your chevron shaped rag quilt. Moving on from essentially creating different shapes throughout your rag quilts, you can start focusing on the actual individual squares. There is a pattern out there made by Simplicity and within that pattern they show you how to add a lion's head into a single square as well as a star shape and I don't know if in that pattern they'll show you how to do a circle shape but I've done a circle shape on top, well I mean essentially this one here, right? This is a, a little turtle, but you just add a little circle shape to the top and then you can cut around it and that's adding a shape onto your square. I have a tutorial on how to add a rosette into your rag quilt onto a single square. The rosettes are a bit time consuming, but they make a beautiful addition to your rag quilt because they give you a whole bunch of added texture to your rag quilt. So I'll link that tutorial as well. If you're adding the rosettes, because they are so time consuming, you can add them in ways where you're just adding to one to each outer corner or you decide to do a checkered pattern and you only add like that lion's head or a rosette to that checkered pattern. That way you're not having to do it for every single square because that will become really time consuming but also I don't think it will look as nice. I think those plain squares in between the fancier squares help to frame out the nicer squares if that makes sense. Another way to change how your rag quilt looks is by changing the binding itself. So a lot of my rag quilts when I put them together I'm really excited because they're thick in this center section because they have so much extra fabric but the outer edge, the outer edge can sometimes look a bit shabbier 
And some people don't mind that. As a matter of fact, most rag quilts, if not all the rag quilts I've seen, that's how the outer edge is. But I've seen a new technique that I'm really excited to share with you so that you can hide that outer edge and make it look a bit tidier. So what you'll do is you'll take your rag quilt and you'll actually add a binding to it, but you're not getting rid of the ragging completely. What you'll do is, it, say you're sewing your seam at a half inch, then cut yourself a two inch piece of fabric and cut it double because if you're going to add a binding, it's best if it has two pieces of fabric. That way, once you sew your half inch seam, did you see my son run across in the background? He knows I'm filming. <laughs> Sorry, that really threw me off. Okay, itchy nose. Anytime I talk about fabric, it's like all the fibers get in the air and then my nose just goes crazy. Okay, so where was I? So if you have that two inch piece of binding, essentially, you can fold it over the edge, sew your half inch seam along there, and then you'll end up with a little lip. And that has two pieces of fabric that you can now cut. Actually, even if you did three layers, that would give a really nice ragging effect on this outer edge. But even if you just did the two layers, because your ragging isn't sticking out with nothing on it, it's laying on top of other fabric, it will just look so much nicer. So I am really excited to try that new technique on my rag quilts in the future. I hope that made sense. If that didn't make sense, I can explain it better in the comments down below. Just let me know if you need a little bit more clarification. Okay, let's think. Animal patterns. We're here. This is my favorite way to make rag quilts. And there are so many different animal patterns. I am going to go through the ones that I know. If I don't link in the description down below a particular pattern, please leave it in the comment section because I am always looking for new rag quilt patterns. Even if it's an Etsy shop, leave your link down below. I would love to see other rag quilt patterns. And then if you're watching this tutorial later on, check those comments down below to see what other people have posted as well. So essentially I'm gonna ramble through a list quickly here, but I'm going to explain the differences between some of these rag quilt patterns. I'm gonna start by mentioning that there is a rag quilt pattern out there that is more made as a baby blanket or a toddler blanket. And this pattern, as a matter of fact, all the patterns I'm about to mention are by Simplicity. All right, so that Simplicity pattern will help you make a snail, a butterfly, and a turtle. And they're smaller, so they're a nicer size for a baby blanket or a blanket that you can throw on a stroller when you're going for a walk. And then all the rest of these Simplicity animal patterns come I'm trying to think the sizing I mean they're big enough to throw on a twin bed if that makes sense okay so I think I'll just go through the simplicity patterns that I own now and then I will link down below any that I don't own because there are some animals out there that I don't have yet so this simplicity pattern here it is titled w0171 and it's by simplicity and it is a little fox a little monkey and a little horse I shouldn't say little these are the sizes that are for on the twin beds so I have yet to make this particular pattern I just ordered it just got it super excited to use it but I have a few other patterns in the works that I have to do first then this simplicity pattern is number 2935 and it is a butterfly an owl and then a flower which I guess is not an animal but the owl I have made numerous times I have yet to make the butterfly and I think the reason why I've avoided the butterfly a little bit is because it has such big side pieces with such a small little center although I have seen gorgeous pictures of brand new babies and they lay them right in the center it's a really cute Instagram photo. So if you feel like making a rag quilt just so you can have a cute Instagram photo, that's it. <laughs> this owl is harder to make. So if you're a beginner rag quilt sewer, but you're interested in making an animal quilt, this is the pattern I recommend for you. This one is Simplicity and it's a puppy dog, teddy bear, and a kitty cat. And the number is 4993. And this is what I started using when I first started to do animal rag quilts. And this one is perfect because the pieces are large, most of your seams are straight seams, and it's not a ton of cutting and a ton of tight corners. So I highly recommend this one. If you're going to start animal rag quilts and you haven't done any yet, this is the one for you. 
Then Simplicity also has this pattern, which I have made, I have actually, I've made all three. I've made the turtle a bunch of times. This turtle is the one for my son. It's very well loved <laughs> and totally faded. But uh, yeah, the turtle is a really nice blanket and it's also fairly easy to make as is the caterpillar. The caterpillar has singular circles on all of the squares, which makes it a bit time consuming but it still is an easy rag quilt to make. And as a matter of fact, I have fabric for both of those patterns that I have to make. Those are in the works, waiting for me, and I'll get to it. I have to get to it before this summer because they're for my niece and nephew. That's something I did not mention. The reason why I have been making these rag quilts for decades is because I make a new animal rag quilt for each one of my nieces and nephews, but I don't give it to them when they're first born. I give it to them when they're around three, four, five. I find that's the age that they're the most excited to see an animal blanket. So moving on to different animal ray quilts. That's as many animal ray quilts as I own. Just trying to think here. Oh, okay, this is why I don't have these next two patterns. They are elusive to me. The first one that I'll mention, so there is a pattern out there that you can make a panda you can make a fish, the clown, I think they're called clownfish, Nemo the clownfish. You can make that one. And what does it come with? Oh, a ladybug. I would really like to get my hands on that rag quilt pattern. So that one, I don't think it's as hard to find, but this one, I have found this pattern on eBay for over a hundred dollars. And I'm just not gonna spend over a hundred dollars for this pattern. And it kills me that simplicity, I don't know, Maybe it's different in the States. Maybe you can walk into a Joanne Fabrics and find this one. If you can, please let me know because the next time in the, I'm in the States, I will be hunting this one down. This one is a peacock, a hedgehog, and a fire truck. Yeah, I would love to make that rag quilt. So, I mean, the hedgehog, that's super cute and super in right now. I would love to make a hedgehog. And the peacock, the colors that you could do on a blanket like that. I'm so upset that I can't get a hold of this pattern. But anyways, if you can, or if you know of somebody with a bunch of these patterns, ask them if they have that pattern and you can make yourself a peacock or a hedgehog or a fire truck. And I think that those would be really popular rag quilt patterns. And then finally, I'm going to move on to other shapes and other types of rag quilts. There is a simplicity pattern, which I bought, and it's number 8033 and it comes as a little house. So I guess you've got your little castle and then you've got your little mushroom hut, which is super cute. But what I love most about this pattern is that it comes with a matching pattern to do a doll blanket. I'm so excited for this pattern and again, I have not opened this one yet because I'm waiting to do that caterpillar and that turtle first. So I just have to wait. When quarantine is over and I can get back into that fabric store, yes, this is happening. So there are a whole bunch of, a whole bunch. There are a few different ways that you can make rag quilts that aren't actually quilts. There are pillows that you can make. So this one here, obviously a bird, a frog, a penguin, and a butterfly. I love that you can make a pillow and you could do a matching one. If I would have had this pattern back when I was making other rag quilts for my nieces and nephews, then I could have used the same fabric and made a matching pillow, which I think would be a really nice gift. And what else is there? Oh, I don't have this pattern, but I have seen it and I will link down below. There is a rag quilt box backpack pattern out there that you can get. So that would be a fun way to make a rag quilt in a different form. And oh, there's also a simplicity pattern out there that is pillow as well, but it's for monsters. So I think it's four different types of monsters, two with like the single eye in the center. And then I think two just normal eyes, but they look like super Super cute monsters. What I like about the idea for the pillows, especially the monster pillows, is you could use your scraps and you could get rid of a bunch of your excess fabric because any sewer has that magic bin of excess fabric, right? Yeah, I do. 
I do have a matching blog post to this video that I will link in the description down below. So if there is ever any new ideas that I come across, I will definitely be posting them in that blog post. So check that out. Oh, and if you are interested, especially if you're a beginner rag quilter, I am going to do a video that will talk through all of my tips and tricks that I do when I'm making a rag quilt. I'll talk about batting a little bit. I'll talk about um, different ways to get your lines a bit thicker, um, a whole bunch of different things, but that is for the next tutorial. And that is my long list of rag quilt ideas. I hope that you have found something that I have listed in this video that will inspire you to make rag quilts. So I hope that you'll subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you don't miss that next tutorial, and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you are doing to make your rag quilting a little bit more unique, fun, and creative. I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, and did I say hit that like button? Because hitting that like button helps my YouTube channel. Blah, 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 blah.